Oh, sh here we go again. YouTube, welcome into the video. Welcome into the channel. What you're looking at on your screen right now, this atrocity of what you're seeing on your screen is a 42 inch LG C3. And I've decided to include the other culprit in this bad picture quality, which is the Xbox Series X. Now, if you are somebody who this is your first time checking out one of my videos, I encourage you to go back and check out some of my other videos for the subject I'm getting ready to talk about, which is the Xbox Series X and how it doesn't play nice with the LG TVs. Now, here I was thinking that I had cleared this issue. And let me give you a little bit of background here. I have had several months of problems getting the Xbox Series X to communicate correctly with my game room TV, which is an LG C2. And I have done so many different things, trial and error, and I've really just come to the conclusion that I'm just going to have to put up with the Xbox Series X not playing well with the LG C2. Fast forward to right now, 42 inch LG C3, it's here in my office, and I decided to connect a couple of game consoles to this, this display because at some point down the road, I wanna get into doing some game streaming with you guys. And so I thought I'd go ahead and connect a couple of consoles in here, get things kind of dialed in, see how I feel about playing on this small display compared to my game room TV. And here I was thinking I had actually fixed this problem. And um, let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. Now, from the very first time that I connected this Xbox Series X to this C3, let me show you what it was showing me at the bottom, which is right here. This is exactly what you should be seeing. If you're somebody who has an LG C series TV or you're gonna be getting one and you have an Xbox Series X and that's one of the reasons why you got this display, how this is showing up is what you wanna see. The little game controller letting you know that the TV is recognizing it as a game console. It literally says game console and you could see what HDMI input I have this plugged into for this particular display. You also see I have my PC hooked up to it. It's the main reason why I have this display. And then of course I have the PS5 now hooked up because once again, I wanna do some game streaming somewhere down the line. Anyhow, one of the things that I thought I probably would escape with this new display is this problem with the Xbox Series X not communicating well with the C3 or vice versa. You know, it could be C3 to Xbox, C2 to Xbox causing the problem. But the different things I've tried to do to fix this issue leads me to believe I'm not sure which one it is. You know, I've tried the best of the best HDMI cables. I mean, they're the best in my opinion because these are the same high-end 4K, uh, or actually they're 8K, HDMI 2.1 cables certified the whole nine yards. I've actually featured them on the channel or mentioned them before. I have them connected to pretty much every display in the house for my family. And I have zero issues with these cables on anything else connecting from device to display. Not one single issue except connecting Xbox Series X to an LG TV. I, I can't even just I can't even exclude or just narrow it down to the C2 because clearly this also is impacted on the C3. So let's go in here and take a look real quick. We're going to go into settings. We're going to go to TV and display options. And I know the camera is a little bit backed off, so you probably can't see exactly what I'm seeing. But look at this resolution 640 by 480. You know, and this is so horrible to look at. I'm actually going to get back out of it. Okay, we're back here on the home screen. I mean, look at this, you know, on the C2, the, when I have this sort of problem pop up, what it does is it basically crops the entire image down to one square in the middle. Okay. Like a, you know, if you're familiar with TVs and when someone says like a 10% window, a 25% window, et cetera, I would say it shrinks down the image to like, uh, you know, a 25% window or a 35% window. Okay. There's like a square in the middle and it's so small it's hard to even see well enough to go up here to settings and do a full shutdown on the device and then start all over again but here's the thing 
Here's the kicker on this, this problem. On the C2, and again, I've documented this in the past, when it loads up and it shows me the low resolution screen, the way to fix it on the C2 is to just go in here to settings and go to power options, go to shutdown now and do a full hard shutdown, okay? And then when the Xbox loads back in for the very next, the very first time afterwards, everything's back to normal. But we're actually gonna do a simulation right now because before I started filming, I loaded up the Xbox, everything looked good. You know, go back to the inputs here. You know, it recognized it as a game console. It says Xbox game console. Everything looks good here. Whereas on the C2, when I have this weird resolution problem, it just says um, HDMI 4, okay? Because I have it connected to HDMI 4 on that display. It doesn't recognize it as anything, just a generic device. On the C3, they've upped the ante. They said, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna troll you and show you that, hey, this, the, the display recognizes it just how it's supposed to. But look at this, if I hit the settings button here on the remote where it's supposed to bring up the game dashboard, watch this, it pulls up the regular picture modes. In other words, the TV, the display is not recognizing the Xbox as anything but a generic device. So it's bringing up the generic uh, picture menus and you know the other menu settings. Whenever I'm on the PS5 and I hit that same settings button on the remote, the little game dashboard pops up in, in the bottom middle where I can manipulate the data while I'm gaming, you know, whatever I'm playing. And that's what's supposed to happen. But the Xbox Series X, not, not working. And like I mentioned a moment ago, before I started filming, and this is what made me want to do this video, is I thought, well, hey, it loaded up incorrectly once, that's really annoying. I really thought that we would have these kind of bugs worked out going from the C2 to the C3, right? Wrong. I, re I did the full hard shutdown, let everything settle, went off, powered it back up like normal, and it came right back to the screen. I said, wow, that's two times in a row. The C2 has never done that, okay? So let me do it again. Repeated the process loaded up like this again. I said, I'm gonna do this one more time. Why don't we go for the trifecta? Loaded back in, and this is the exact screen you're looking at. This was after shutdown number three, which now makes me wonder, what's the fix gonna be for the C3 for this problem? Am I gonna have to turn the console off, unplug both, eight, you know, both ends of the HDMI cable, plug them both back in and then, and then restart it? and then maybe it'll recognize it properly, you know? So, I, I don't know. I thought about doing a live demonstration here, but uh, you know what, screw it. Let's just do it. So go in here to power options. This will be number four. Shut down now, hit the uh, inputs here. And by the way, if you're, if you're new to LG TVs, if, if the input is still showing up uh, as highlighted, even though the, the device is off, it's still drawing power. In other words, it's still kind of live, okay? The key to this is to make sure it goes full gray, like this. Like you see the PS5 shows gray. It's completely disconnected off. Now the Xbox is showing that. Notice how it's not changing it to HDMI 2 or anything. It still recognizes it, okay? We're gonna go ahead and do a, uh, a power up here together. You know, here I've got the trusty Forza Horizon uh, theme controller. Uh, I just started using this again since I moved the Xbox in, into my office. Uh, I was using another little device that allowed me to use uh, PlayStation 5 controllers, which was a game changer for me. I love using the PS5 controllers on there. Um, <laughs> I'll have another video talking about why I have since unplugged that. But anyway, here we go. Let's go ahead and press and hold the button. You hear the little chime. It'll fire back up. It's Try number four, it has loaded in correctly. Okay. This is, this is unacceptable in my opinion. When somebody invests their hard-earned money into a, what I would still consider a high-end display, okay, to the average consumer out there, the amount of, the amount of money you have to spend on a 42-inch TV or slash display for this particular model, the C3, 
this is a high-end TV for the average consumer. And I would consider it a high-end purchase considering it's a desktop monitor. You know, I'm not going to be hooking up Apple TV 4Ks and watching content. This is strictly for my office use, video editing, you know, et cetera. Just normal, you know, PC usage. And again, I thought I would just connect a couple of consoles in here and just have a nice, you know, I wanted to set up a streaming setup. That's what I want to do. And I thought this would be a nice display to use for streaming. But the Xbox Series X here, it, the Xbox Series X is, is quickly becoming one of my least favorite devices I've ever purchased when it comes to a game console. Okay. And if you go back and look at some of my prior videos, there was a time where I thought I'm ready to sell the Xbox Series X and just go PC since you can have Xbox Game Pass on that. I thought, well, what the you know, why would I keep the Series X with all these issues on my game TV? Why would I keep it when I could just get rid of it, get rid of the headaches and just, you know, use my PC for that? But I thought, you know, just when I was getting ready to sell it, the UI change, uh, you know, Xbox changed the user interface experience. And I did a, a, a pretty long video walking you through the whole UI change and how it's different from uh, what it came with when Xbox Series X came with and how much more I like this design. It's clean. It's, you know, it's kind of minimalistic, you know, that sort of thing. I just, I like the UI so much. I said, you know what? This actually kept me from selling the console. Now I'm going to add a few games to the library and actually get on here and play. You know, before this, I was mainly playing uh, Forza Horizon 5. I'd hop on, navigate the map for a little bit, you know, do some racing and get off, you know, get off the Xbox Series X and I'd go right back to PS5 for everything else. But this UI change, you know, said, you know, maybe let me give it another look. And here I go. You know, I went ahead and, you know, dropped in Starfield. And naturally, if I like Forza Horizon 5, you know, I'm going to pick up Motorsport. Considering these titles showed up in my Game Pass that I already paid for, I said, I'm going to go ahead and, and allow the Xbox to stick around. But I got to tell you, I'm getting more. And by the way, you can hear that. Listen to that cheap ad. You know, that's the main reason why I had purchased this device that allows you to use other controllers. Because I thought, you know, if I am going to keep the Xbox and I'm going to put in some game time with it, Playing a game like Starfield that, you know, it's just infinite possibilities of, you know, infinite time waster. Forza, I've basically loaded it up and done the first uh, race or whatever they throw you in. Uh, I think I picked a car and I haven't even started the, uh, the campaign or whatever for that. This game, I think I loaded up and changed a couple of settings and then put it back down basically. Battlefield, I only threw that here because it was on the Xbox Game Pass. And I wanted to, to test out FPS, you know, genre. Payday I haven't started. And Texas Chainsaw I haven't had a chance. So really what I'm getting to here is I have some stuff loaded up on here now in the library that I'd like to be able to put some time in and, you know, have some fun with these games. You know, I have out of this whole list right here, you can see I have the most time on Starfield. You know, and I don't know how far I am into the campaign on that, but, you know, I've made some progress. You know, and I, I should, I'll probably do a separate video on Starfield itself because the sh FPS, you know, availability has almost ruined the experience, not to mention the HDR experience, okay? When you get an OLED TV, here I go down a different ramp path here. When you buy an OLED TV, one of the things you, you're, you're, one of the reasons why you're buying it is the infinite contrast, the perfect blacks you know, how the colors pop against the perfect blacks. And when you're playing a game like Starfield that's space, okay, you're thinking you're gonna get a fantastic experience on OLED. Guess what? The, the, the low FPS, what are you getting? Maybe, you know, 30 frames per second in that game? It's dreadful, you know? Any, when you're moving around, looking in different, it's, it's a dreadful experience, especially if you're used to playing games like Call of Duty, where you can get 120 frames on the LG C-Series TVs, and if you have a next-gen console, it's a buttery smooth experience. And when you go from that, you get used to that, 120 down to 30, you, you almost can't go back. 
You know, it, it, separate rant for another video, but Starfield, for the love of all things, put a performance mode in there and I'll take a drop in resolution and graphics for at minimum 60, give me a, a 60 FPS mode and I'll take less graphics and call it a day. You know, but you giving me the highest resolution possible based on the console's capability with 30 frames, it sucks. And then to go along with that, I have to go in here and I can't even show you. Well, I can now because the dashboard will show up. I have to go in here and make a special mode and, and make changes uh, to, the, to the settings just for this one game because of the horrible HDR experience. But anyhow, I'm sorry I went off on a side tangent there. I just figured I'd tie it in because, you know, this is a, an Xbox title, uh, you know, a PC or whatever, Xbox title. And since it's right here front and center, I thought I'd go ahead and take a, chan uh, take a moment to about that too. But if you're, still, if you're still hanging with me right now, I appreciate you sticking with me on this. Leave me some comments below. Uh, again, I thought I was getting away from this. I thought, you know what, the C2, for all the things I like about it, no display is perfect. If that's what I have to deal with on it, so be it. I don't think it's worth it to make a display change for the game room and make a whole nother new big investment going to another TV manufacturer just so Xbox will play nice with it. I don't think that's worth it, which is why I haven't moved on from the C2 at this point. But since I had gotten the C3, I thought, you know what? I bet it'll play nice with it. I bet you it'll work properly. And boy, did it fool me because when I connected it and it showed me this and I didn't have to make any changes in the edit inputs menu or anything, I thought, man, really, maybe it is a C2 problem or just my particular C2 problem. Nope, dead wrong. Clearly, it's still messed up. We'll even go back in here. TV and display. Look at that. 4K 120. You know, get all the nice, pretty green check marks. The only two you're not getting are, are Dolby Vision uh, here, or the only one, I should say. The only thing I'm missing is Dolby Vision. That's because I have that disabled for now. So, you know, I've been ranting. I've been, I'm on, I'm on a roll here. I appreciate you staying with me if you're still here. What I want from, from this video is I want some comments under this video talking to me about your Xbox Series X and your LG TV. It doesn't have to even be an OLED. It could be any of the LG TVs. I want you to talk to me in the comments about your experience with the Xbox Series X or Series S. I imagine the Series S has these same problems. You know, If you have a Series S, I'm not excluding you. Talk to me in the comments and tell me your experience between your LG TV and your Xbox console. I already know what your experience is most likely with uh, with the PS5 because I have PS5 and I've never once had an issue with it. You know, if, if you have had problems with your LG TV and the PS5, you can leave me comments on that. I'd be curious to hear what your issues are. Maybe I can help. But uh, that's going to do it for this video. It's back to the drawing board. I'm going to do some, I'm going to do some more testing here. And I'm going to see if I can find a resolution for this. And if I find some, some way to get around this issue. And what I mean by that is, if I can find a fix to where every time I load up the Xbox Series X console, it will load into this screen what you're looking at here. If I could just get it to work properly. That doesn't seem like a high standard to me. Does it to you? If I can just get it to load up and work properly like it's supposed to, like the PS5 and whatever, I'll be satisfied. I'll be happy. And if I could find a resolution to make that happen and hopefully help some of you all if you're having problems, I'll be sure to bring you a video talking about it. So that's going to do it for this video. As always, I appreciate you watching my videos. If you found the content entertaining or you learned anything or you, you'd like my content or this video, leave a like on it. It doesn't cost you anything. It takes you a second and it really helps, my, it helps support my channel and grow it without you having to spend any money. And if you're unsubscribed and you wanna see more content, especially how this plays out, hit the subscribe button. And of course, if you're gonna subscribe, go ahead and hit that bell so you don't miss the upload when it goes live. And as always, until the next one.